Functions Data Binding. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can connect Power Apps to Azure Functions and uh, in turn connect uh, Cosmos Database into the functions. Um, now, as we saw earlier, there was a, um, a workflow diagram that uh, you, we were following to determine what service to deploy in Azure. Uh, well, those questions and answers have to be stored somewhere, and they're going to be stored in the Cosmos database. Um, and we, we use, we're using Power Apps to uh, allow the, uh, the admin to create and core, uh, uh, edit the, the functions and the details around them, as well as the solutions. So I'm going to show that, uh, and then I'm going to show the functions that are behind the scenes, uh, reading and writing the data. Uh, and I'm going to show the Cosmos data uh, behind it. And then I'm going to show you how you can bind uh, your, your Cosmos database instance into that function. So uh, let's get started by looking at the Power Apps first. So here's an editor, um, and, it's, uh, and it allows me to, uh, to uh, edit the services uh, the, or the, edit the questions. Uh, and I can... Uh, I can see what they are, and I can I can make changes to it, and I can update it. This data is coming from an Azure function behind the scenes. Um, similarly, the solutions is another section that's actually uh, being read from the Cosmos database as well, um, and it is something that I can edit as well um, as before. There's uh, APIs that are allowing me to do that. And finally, there is this visualize, which actually is, a, uh, is an Azure function, which is actually generating a graphical representation of my questions. Um, and so how was this built? Uh, well, first off, in my Power Apps, I defined a custom connection. And my custom connection consisted of uh, the swagger definition of the APIs. And the APIs, um, you know, swagger is a well-known um, format. And so uh, in here, you can define what's going to be your get and what's going to be your post. And similarly, it can define the data models behind the scene. So uh, it, uh, it's a pretty comprehensive way to define uh, interactions with the functions. Now, behind the scenes, uh, when this API gets called, uh, it calls the Azure functions as we just talked about. So let's go take a look at what those functions are. So I have... Uh, deployed in a in a function app um, these uh, these list of functions. Uh, now these are all coded in a language called C# -sharp script. Um, so if you saw the earlier demonstration where we were deploying C# -sharp code, uh, that was edited and deployed from Visual Studio Code. This is an example of actually using the Azure portal to uh, edit uh, the function directly. So here, let's go take a look at the list questions. So here, uh, if I uh, click into the code section, um, it's, uh, it's, it looks like C-sharp. Uh, the difference is that I can actually edit this in the browser. Uh, I can make edits, and I can actually save changes. So let's say I make a, a blank space, and if I hit Save, uh, functions will actually go and um, compile this and, and make it available for me to run. So all this is doing is actually defining two classes, uh, one called question and one called education. Education is an array um, of, um, of, 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 of education items, right? That, that they're defined here. They have a title URL and a type. And the, my function, uh, all it's doing is that when it's being called, it's receiving a list of innumerable questions, I innumerable questions uh, in, in this variable called Cosmos questions. And for the response, all it's doing is it's converting my JSON questions into JSON and returning that to the function itself, to the call itself. So um, pretty straightforward. Um, and if I, and this is where the data bindings is really, you know, this is, this is the power of data binding. So what's happening here, if I look at Cosmos questions, um, it's going to contain all the list of questions. To be, uh, to be returned. If I switch over to my functions.json, this is where the binding is defined. Um, there's, uh, a, th this is actually the, the request binding, uh, and it's just saying that the function can be, um, that the function can be, will respond and a get and a post, um, 
and it's got this function level authorization. So that means there's a there's a key that's required in order to invoke this function. And when I when I connected it into Power Apps, I used that key to to uh, to enable communication between the Power Apps as well as uh, Azure Functions. Uh, now. The next thing here is this Cosmos questions. Um, it's connecting to this database called Ismany. It's looking at this collection called questions. Um, and um, that's it, that's all it's doing. Um, I can actually have, I can define the SQL statement in there if I needed to, but for this quick, uh, quick demo, um, I'm just retrieving the questions that are in that database and returning them um, to my function. So when my function gets called, it connects and, and it fills in the details for what questions, uh, with the contents of the question collection. And it will call the run function and the run function just converts it to JSON. So if I was to run it and try it and then see what happens when we get, there's no parameters that it needs. If I run it, what it should do is it should connect to Cosmos. Um, now this is from a cold start, so it took a little bit of time, but here it connected and it's returning this JSON of all the data that's that's in that that collection. If I move over to Cosmos and look at its items, I can see that it has these various um, data items in it. And the way that this list questions works is that it just does a read um, on them. If I go in and I actually look at, um, let's say, update, right? So if I look at update, uh, and this actually update a question, that's what that is. So this one is actually going to write the data um, into the into the database. So here, same, I've defined what a question looks like. I've defined what education looks like. Um, and it looks like I've got to do a little bit more processing. I'm unpacking some of the data. But at the end of it, it's it's issuing an update for one particular document. In this case, it's Q. Q is my document. And it's, and it's referred to as output document. Output document is defined in my function as an out record. Uh, if I look to my function, in my function, I'm defining my output document is connected to this database, to that collection. My partition key is slash ID. Um, and the connection string, which is basically how I'm connecting to uh, the instance of the database I'm connecting to is actually defined in uh, a variable um, that's that's at the function level. So here it's Cosmos is many meta. So if I come here and I go to the properties, um, I should find it there. It's either properties or configure, it's configuration, I'm sorry. If I look over at configuration, there will be a uh, connection setting that I've defined. Um, there it is. And uh, it's basically the, the connection string that's basically allows me to have that connection. So the function itself is saying uh, at runtime, receive the data that was passed to it via post and go and update Cosmos. So data binding, this is a very quick example of data binding. There are, uh, if you wanna uh, point your browser to um, Azure Functions data binding. You'll you'll find probably the very first one, uh, not the first one, that's somewhere else. So let's look at triggers and bindings in Azure Functions. Um, here you can see uh, the different uh, ways to register the bindings themselves. And actually, if I go into the reference section, I believe the, the triggers and binding section here, it actually shows how I can connect into Blob, Cosmos DB, SQL, Event Grid, Event Hub, IoT, all of that's there. Um, let's look at Cosmos, and, in and I'm using functions 2.0, 2.x and higher. Um, and here, if I'm defining an input binding, this shows me an example of how to define it. Um, so let's look at C Sharp script here. Um, it shows me how I can define it. It kind of just uh, cut and paste from here. Uh, on the outbound side, similarly, I can just look at C Sharp script example, um, and here it shows me that that's how I've defined it. And like I said, there are ways to customize that um, with SQL statements and uh, to specify IDs and things like that. Now, depending on which uh, 
data source you're connecting to. In this case, I'm looking at Cosmos DB. I'm using the Cosmos DB connection def uh, that's defined. Um, there's another one that we could use. Event there's another demo that I'll show later, um, which actually uses Event Grid, um, sorry, Event Hub, to um, to send a message to a logic app. Um, but uh, more on that later. So end to end, this is my example of uh, of the function and how it's it was implemented. Thank you.